Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I'm Chad Booth. We are going to be taking a look at the health care of inmates in county jails. This is an issue that has been ongoing for several years and has some significant problems and some significant differences of opinion between the insurance industry and the health care industry. We'll be finding out about that during the course of the show today, but first, we want to take a look at the land. Getting the lay of the land is the most important thing that a pioneer does when he comes across a new valley. Keeping a record of the land becomes the job of the county surveyor. Well, Chad, you could say this is the center of everything in Utah. It's the original X, if X marks the spot. Land in the state is measured from this point on the southeast corner of Temple Square. This spot was marked by a government surveyor who came here in 1855, just a few years after the Mormon pioneers arrived. He wasn't warmly greeted by the early settlers, but went about his work, setting down a grid of cedar posts to mark the area. He abandoned the post just after a year, and Orson Pratt went to work as a surveyor. The work that started at Temple Square and one other initial monument site in Uinta County set the stage for everything land surveyors do today. Surveyors like Utah County's Gary Ratcliffe. That was the basis for, for everything right there. Gary was just elected in November to be the Utah County Surveyor. But for more than 30 years, Gary has worked finding old markers or monuments placed in the county since the 1800s. As the population grows and development expands, these early markers are crucial in defining the boundaries of our properties. Gary is intent on finding them. It intrigued me to be able to go out and, and to try and locate these historical markers. They, you know, it, it's similar to uh, when, you, when you're a child and you're, you're going on a treasure hunt and you, you're given all these clues. These clues can be anything, as long as it's a stationary object emerging from the ground. I found it! We'll look for anything that's unnatural, that uh, appears like Mother Nature may not have, have set that. Like this rock, with an unusual symbol chiseled on the surface. Barely see the one and the four, it's like a fraction one-fourth. It's a, what they call a quarter stone. The quarter stone breaks a larger square area of land into four parts. This one was marked in the year 1872 by a surveyor who then logged its location in a diary like this. These old field notes describe a red pine tree, which was also a geographical marker. A marker could be a tree, it could be a post, it could be a brass cap. Nowadays, county surveyors use metal posts and brass caps to mark locations, and they use very high-tech tools to do it. This right here, is the radio antenna. This is the radio. This is the base radio. This GPS gear helps today's surveyors be pretty darn accurate in pinpointing property markers and defining property boundaries. That helps us to measure things more precisely, quicker than ever before. We search for a marker that was originally recorded in an 1856 survey. We're navigating to the point, to the corner, and uh, pretty quick we'll be right in the bullseye closer. Closer, we're right, right over here. there. You've just navigated to the point. Bullseye. It's another quarter marker with a brass cap dated 1962. It says one quarter, see that one quarter right there? It tells you it's between sections 20 and 21. Township uh, 7 South, range 3 East. What a surveyor does for us today allows us to know exactly what is ours as landowners and what isn't. Everybody's property interests and property rights are either directly or indirectly tied, tied back to these monuments. And the county surveyor keeps the records for all of it. We have to be very precise and, and very good with what we do, or we cause, we cause heartache for people. And that's important information to have before you build a home too close to the property line, or you get ready to sink a lot of money into a pricey new fence. For the county seat, I'm Susan Wood. Chad? With most of the original surveying work in the state already being completed, one would think, how hard can it be for a county surveyor to do their job? But consider this. When you have all the plots and the deeds and the acreages and the plat maps across the state, 
And when you consider that there are 54 million acres within the boundaries of the state of Utah, that's a lot of information to keep track of. Well, stay with us. When we come back, we will be discussing inmate health care. Who should be paying for it? The inmate, the taxpayer, or the inmate's insurance company? St. George, Utah was recently named TripAdvisor's number one travel hotspot. And travelers picked Zion National Park as the best national park. If you haven't planned your St. George or Zion getaway yet, visit AtoZion.com and find out why everyone else is already packing. Won't you come and play? St. George, Utah. Everything from A to Zion. What do you picture when you hear Rich County, Utah? Winter adventure? Snowmobile action? Pristine skiing? Spectacular solitude? Well, if that isn't what first came to mind, then you just don't know Rich County. Snowmobiling Monte Cristo. Ice fishing Bear Lake. Skiing the backcountry. Come and find out what you never knew you were missing. Rich County, Utah. In order for there to be adventure, there must first be a land that offers it. In order for there to be discovery, there must first be something undiscovered. It's time you discovered Northeastern Utah's dinosaur lands, the trails, water, beauty, and history that have been 65 million years in the making. Take your journey to a destination where adventure is only limited by your imagination. Join us in Uinta County, Undiscovered Utah. 